Welcome back to the shop. The Spitfire is running a little bit rough. It's time to do a tune-up. I'm going to walk you through my process of what I'm going to do and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, we'll start off with a uh, uh, vacuum gauge reading to see what the engine's looking like, and then we'll go through and uh, set the valve lash, um, adjust the carburetor, and also uh, adjust the uh, advanced timing. Um, should be a lot of fun. Okay, here's the uh, vacuum test. I've got the vacuum gauge hooked into the manifold, and this is what my current reading is. So I'm at about between 17 and 18 uh, inches of mercury, which is acceptable. Got a little bit of movement up and down. I'm not too sure about that, but I'll take a look at what the what it says I should be looking at and maybe making some adjustments. Yeah, it's drifting up and down. That's not good. So um, I hear a little bit more ticking that I think I like as well. So I'm going to pull the valve cover again and just go back through the valve lash just to make sure it's all right. Going to have to wait for it to cool down before I do that, though. So. Before you get started, uh, take the valve cover off and then wipe up any bits of oil or um, valve cover gasket or anything that's on the, the, uh, the top of the cylinder head. You don't want that stuff to get trapped inside of your uh, engine and going through your, your oiling uh, pathways. It may damage your engine, so don't do that. Um, do clean it. <laughs> uh, if necessary, you know, use a good old-fashioned uh, razor blade and scrape it up and wipe it up with a, a, a cloth. So that's that's the first step. Next, so to do that, you want the valve closed and you want to make the adjustment on this rocker while the valve is closed. And you're going to put a uh, ten thousandths of an inch gap in there using the. feeler gauge. Okay, so now um, to know that this is open, what you're going to be doing is your opposite valve and using the rule of nines, it's valve one plus valve eight equals nine. So if I'm adjusting valve one, valve eight also needs to be open. When I'm adjusting valve two, valve seven needs to be open. Three and six, four and five, and five and four, all, that's the rule of nine. You want the two valves to add up to be the, be the uh, sum of nine. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, remove the spark plugs and keep them in order so that I can read the spark plugs a little bit later. So I'm going to use a 13 16 inch deep socket. And be careful not to break the spark plugs. There.
these plugs look a little dark. So once I'm done taking the plugs out, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to um, set the, the valves up so that um, when the valves for cylinder number four are um, loose, basically not, not compressing the valves, I can adjust the valves on cylinder number one and vice versa. And when the valves for cylinder number two are loose, then I can then I can tighten or set the lash on uh, cylinder number three, and then when three is loose, I can do uh, the valves for cylinder number two. So uh, one and four, and two and three are pairs. So in order to turn the crank, you need a one and seven eighths inch wrench. I tried to do it with a socket, but there is not enough width or space between the pulley and the radiator. So I gotta, I gotta use this. And basically just insert it in there and give it a turn. I'll never use this size of wrench for anything else. I've now got number six um, valve, the intake valve fully open. That's this one here. And number three intake is also open. So I will um, make that adjustment now. So that is right about right, right there. So I'll tighten it. Okay, so one and three are done. Let's verify it. Nah, that's too tight. Too tight. Okay, try one more time. That's good, that's the way it should be. Okay, so the next valve will be the number five valve with number four exhaust. So I'm doing one, three, five, and then I'll do two, eight, six, four, and seven. So it just repeat over and over again. All right, once you're done, um, adjusting all the valves and setting all the lashes. It's um, a good idea just to turn the engine over um, without spark plugs in it. Just to turn it over and verify uh, several times that you've got uh, the right lash and that there isn't anything too loose. Um, you can make the adjustments at that point. Uh, once you've got um, you know basically a, a secondary check to make sure everything is right, um, then you put your Valve cover back on after cleaning the, cleaning the deck and cleaning the inside of the valve cover. Now, I've got a brand new gasket here, and I used a little bit of uh, gasket sealer to hold this thing in place um, until I get it pinched down. So, um, it goes in. And just 
this down. Okay, and then I'll just put the, uh, the screws in place and tighten it up. Next thing I'll do is uh, hook everything back up and then I'll get the engine started uh, just to verify that uh, and warmed up um, and then we'll do a, um, a, uh, a, a vacuum test on the intake manifold to see where we are and see if there's anything else that we need to do. Okay, so I uh, wire brushed, I wasn't real worried about cleaning it up too much, but I wire brushed each of the spark plugs and I numbered them, one, two, three, and four, so I get them back in the same location. I also verified gap on the, on the electrode. I gapped it to 34 thousandths, uh, or yeah, 0 .3, 0 0.034, um, so, or 34 hundredths. And um, I also marked the electrode on the back. So what I'm, what I'm trying to see is if the gap, if the electrode is always pointing down into the cylinder. So I want to understand if I have any opportunity to, um, to basically adjust and set the spark plug so that it's facing in the optimal direction down into the uh, down into the chamber. So I'm going to install these. You know how to do that. You don't need to see me see me do it. I'll, I'll do that off camera. Okay, here's the number four cylinder, and the line is straight up, so it's well indexed. That's awesome. Number three, uh, it's off to about maybe one or two o'clock. Not bad, I'll take it. Number two cylinder, yeah, almost straight up and down. And number one cylinder, it's right, yeah, there it is. So the electrodes are pointing in the right direction, which is really cool. A uh, nut, it's got a square, square nut, and a nut and a bolt. Square nut and a 7 16 inch head uh, that you can see there. And then once I get that loosened up, I just turn, I turn this to uh, get it closer to top dead center. So if I turn counterclockwise, is the way to get the, uh, closer to top dead center. So I just made the adjustment. Now the timing light I've got is an induction timing light. Got this thing set up on the um, on the uh, number one lead, and just plugged into the battery, positive, negative. That's all I got to do. So that's my test setup. I've got it dialed in, and uh, now I'm looking at my pressure at 1500 RPM. I'm at 20. Now I'll, I'll and it's steady. It's nice and steady. 20 inches of mercury. Now I got to put it back to idle, and then I'll uh, test it there. So here's the vacuum reading after doing the valve lash, setting the timing, and replacing the spark plugs. So um, that's the only thing I've done. I've done a little bit of an adjustment of the, the um, carburetors as well, just to balance them out a little bit. My front carburetor was a little bit lean. So um, here's where we are. Um, it looks good. Um, advanced. Uh, the, on the valve timing is 18 degrees before top dead center. That's what the uh, Triumph manual said it should be for the European spec, which is what this engine is. It's got the um, got a shaped head, it's got uh, the um, flat top pistons. So it's it's the European spec. So everything is the way it's supposed to be. Looking good.